Black Widow 2021 Film Black Widow is a 2021 American superhero film based on Marvel Comics featuring the character of the same name. Produced by Marvel Studios and distributed by Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures, it is the 24th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe MCU. The film was directed by Kate Shortland from a screenplay by Eric Pearson, and stars Scarlett Johansson as Natasha Romanoff Black Widow alongside Florence Pugh, David Harbour, O.T. Fagbenel, Olga Kurilenko, William Hurt, Ray Winstone, and Rachel Weisz. Set immediately after the events of Captain America, Civil War 2016, the film sees Romanoff on the run and forced to confront a conspiracy tied to her past. Lionsgate Films began development of a Black Widow film in April 2004, with David Hayter attached to write and direct. The project did not move forward and the character's film rights had reverted to Marvel Studios by June 2006. Johansson was cast in the role for several MCU films beginning with Iron Man 2, 2010, and began discussing a solo film with Marvel. Work began in late 2017, with Shortland hired in 2018. Jack Sheffer and Ned Benson contributed to the script before Pearson was hired. Filming took place from May to October 2019 in Norway, Budapest, Morocco, Pinewood Studios in England, and in Atlanta, Macon, and Rome, Georgia. Black Widow premiered on June 29, 2021, at various events around the world, and was released in the United States on July 9 simultaneously in theaters and through Disney Plus with premiere access. It is the first film in Phase 4 of the MCU, and was delayed three times from an original May 2020 release date due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Black Widow broke several pandemic box office records upon release, and has grossed over $314 million worldwide, becoming the fifth highest grossing film of 2021. It also made $60 million in Disney Plus global revenue in its opening weekend. The film received generally positive reviews from critics, with praise for the performances particularly of Johansson and Pews, and the action sequences. Contents. One plot. Two cast. Three production. 3.1 development. 3.2 pre-production. 3.3 filming. 3.4 post-production. 4 music. 5 marketing. 6 release. 6.1 theatrical and Disney Plus premiere access. 6.2 Home Media 7 Reception 7.1 Box Office 7.2 Disney Plus Revenue and Viewership 7.3 Critical Response 7.4 Accolades 8 Documentary Special 9 Future 10 Notes 11 References 12 External Links Plot in 1995, super soldier Alexei Shostakov and black widow Melina Vostokov, Russian undercover agents, pose as a family in Ohio with their surrogate daughters Natasha Romanoff and Yelena Belova. After finishing their mission to steal S.H.I.E.L.D. intel, they escape to Cuba and rendezvous with their boss, General Drakov, who has Romanoff and Belova taken to the Red Room for training. Years pass, during which Shostakov is imprisoned in Russia while Romanov defects to S.H.I.E.L.D. after bombing Drakov's Budapest office, apparently killing him and his young daughter Antonia. In 2016, Romanov is a fugitive for violating the Sokovia Accords. She escapes from U.S. Secretary of State Thaddeus Ross and flees to a safe house in Norway supplied by Rick Mason. Meanwhile, Belova kills a rogue former Black Widow but comes in contact with a synthetic gas that neutralizes the Red Room's chemical mind control agent. Belova sends antidote vials to Romanoff, hoping she will send the Avengers to free the other widows. When Romanoff unknowingly drives off with the vials, Taskmaster attacks her seeking them. Romanoff manages to escape Taskmaster and realizes that they came from Belova. The two reunite in Budapest. Romanoff learns Drakov is alive and the Red Room is still active. Shortly after, Black Widows attack them. Romanoff and Belova evade them in Taskmaster before meeting Mason, who supplies them with a helicopter. Romanoff and Belova break Shostakov out of prison to learn Drakov's location. He tells them to speak with Vostokov, who lives on a farm outside St. Petersburg, where she developed the chemical mind control process used on the Widows. There, Belova reveals that while they were not a real family, she believed they were so. Afterward, Vostokov admits she sent their location to Drakov. His agents arrive and take them to the Red Room, an aerial facility. 
Vostok off and Romanov use face mask technology to switch places before being captured, allowing Vostok off to free Shostakov and Belova from their restraints. Meanwhile, Romanov confronts Drakov, who sees through her disguise. Romanov learns Taskmaster is Antonia, who suffered damage severe enough that Drakov had to put a chip in her head. This made her the perfect soldier capable of mimicking the actions of anyone she sees. Romanov attempts to kill Drakov but fails to harm him due to a pheromone lock installed in every widow. Drakov reveals that he controls widows worldwide via his desk console. Romanov intentionally breaks her nose, severing a nerve in her nasal passage to negate the pheromone, and then attacks Drakov. Shostakov battles Taskmaster, while Vostokov takes out one of the facility's engines and Belova searches for the other widows, who have been sent to protect Drakov. Together, Shostakov and Vostokov lock Taskmaster in a cell. Drakov escapes as the widows attack Romanov, but Belova creates an antidote bomb that releases the widows from mind control. Romanov gets into the control desk and copies the locations of the other widows worldwide as the facility begins to explode and fall. Romanov retrieves the two surviving vials of the antidote and frees Taskmaster from the locked cell. Vostokov and Shostakov escape via plane while Belova takes out Drakov's aircraft, killing him. In free fall, Romanov gives Belova a parachute before battling Taskmaster. After landing, Romanov uses one antidote vial on Taskmaster, freeing her from servitude. The freed widows arrive as Belova, Vostokov, and Shostakov say goodbye to Romanov. She gives Belova the last antidote vial in the portable drive telling her to find and free the other, still mind-controlled, widows. As they leave with Antonia, Romanov awaits Ross and his men, who have arrived to apprehend her. Two weeks later, a now blonde Romanov reunites with Mason, who supplies her with a Quinjet. She leaves, intending to free the imprisoned Avengers. In a post credit scene set after Romanov's death, Belova encounters Valentina Allegra de Fontaine at Romanov's grave. De Fontaine assigns Clint Barton, whom she claims is responsible for Romanov's death, as Belova's next target. Cast. Scarlett Johansson as Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow, and Avenger. Highly trained former KGB assassin and former agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Johansson described the film as an opportunity to show the character as a woman who has come into her own and is making independent and active choices for herself, while being in a dark place where she's got no one to call and nowhere to go. Johansson said that she was going out on a high note and was incredibly proud of the film, feeling that her work portraying Romanoff was now complete. Director Kate Shortland said that Romanoff's psychological journey is the center of the story, having ambiguities instead of being a black-and-white character. Johansson cited Romanoff's vulnerability as her strength, which she found endearing and different in comparison to the other Avengers. Ever Anderson portrays a young Natasha Romanoff. Florence Pugh is Yelena Belova, Black Widow, a sister figure to Romanoff who was trained in the Red Room as a Black Widow. Johansson indicated that Belova was an early inclusion in the film, with the character going through a transformation after further development occurred during pre-production. Director Kate Shortland said that Romanoff would be handing Belova the baton in the film, which would propel another female storyline. Johansson said Belova would stand on her own in comparison to Romanoff, while Pugh said there was a generational difference between the two, noting Belova's unapologetic and confident in herself, and curious, and emotionally brave. As well, Pugh stated Belova knows exactly how to function in the areas in which she's been trained, but she has no clue how to live as a human being, calling her a lethal weapon but also a bit of a kid. Pugh admired Belova's bluntness and determination, saying, she's ready to fight, whether it's an argument or physical, and there's no stopping her. Similar to their on-screen characters. Pugh looked to Johansson for guidance during filming on meeting the demands of making Marvel movies. Johansson wanted to avoid the dynamic between the two characters of each trying to take each other down, as that felt very old-fashioned and not true. Instead, Romanoff and Belova have a relationship grounded in a shared experience and a knowingness and a sisterhood that at times can still be contentious. Pew characterized Belova's relationship with Romanoff as a sister story that really hones in on grief, on pain, on abuse, on being a victim, and living with being a victim. Violet McGraw portrays a young Yelena Belova. David Harbour is Alexei Shostakov, Red Guardian, the Russian super soldier counterpart to Captain America and a father figure to Romanoff and Belova. Harbour said Shostakov has tons of cracks all over him. 
and he's not the heroic nobleman that people want him to be. He both comically and tragically has a lot of flaws. Throughout the film, Shostakov claims that he fought Captain America in the 1980s. On his obsession with Captain America, screenwriter Eric Pearson stated that the character believes everything he says to be true, and that you cannot convince Alexei otherwise. For Harbour's portrayal, he and Shortland discussed Ricky Gervais' performance in The Office and Philip Seymour Hoffman's In the Savages 2007, comedy that comes out of real domestic need. Harbour had already grown his facial hair for the fourth season of Stranger Things, so he decided to gain weight for the role, ultimately reaching up to 280 pounds, 127 kilograms, for filming. As the film's flashback sequences portraying a younger Shostakov were to be filmed less, Harbour lost 60 pounds, 27 kilograms, over the course of shooting. O.T. Fag Benel as Rick Mason, an ally from Romanoff's shield past who is romantically interested in her. Fag Benel described Mason as a finder for people who aren't so affiliated with armies and has assisted Romanoff in this manner. On why Mason ultimately did not develop a romance with Romanoff, Fag Benel said, the movie is bigger than that, and that their relationship is part of Romanoff's larger family instead. Aside from the script penned by Pearson, Fag Benel developed Mason's backstory with Shortland and Johansson. As Taskmaster's identity was kept secret many people assumed Mason would secretly take up the mantle, which Fag Benel had to deny even from his personal trainer. The film's final scene involving Mason providing the Quinjet to Romanoff was added as part of reshoots in early 2020, inserted to the film after test audiences liked seeing Romanoff and Mason together. Olga Kurilenko is Antonia Drakov, Taskmaster, Drakov's daughter who completes missions for the Red Room. She has photographic reflexes that allow her to mimic their opponent's fighting style in order to learn how to use it against them, and uses techniques from other superheroes, such as Iron Man. Captain America, The Winter Soldier, Spider-Man, and Black Panther. Due to the character's various skills, several body doubles were required. Kurilenko stated that much of Antonia's pain is internal with the character suffering a lot, and described Antonia's relationship with Drakov as abusive, since Drakov uses her as a tool, and has her do whatever he wants. Pearson said that Antonia was chosen to be Taskmaster instead of the comic's counterpart Tony Masters as Masters is just a mercenary, and that whereas Tony Masters felt like a square peg in a round hole in this story. The idea of this being a loose end from Natasha's past seemed to make sense. Pearson felt that changing Taskmaster's background would interweave with Romanoff's story and dark past, especially from an incident born out of her decision. Ryan Keir Armstrong portrays a young Antonia Drakov. William Hurt as Thaddeus Ross, the United States Secretary of State and a former U.S. Army general. Ray Winstone as Drakov, a Russian general and the head of the Red Room. On conceptualizing Drakov, Pearson said that the film needed a villain that fit within the film's short time frame and whose success could remain undetected, so it would not contradict the events of Infinity War. Pearson described Drakov as a coward, puppeteering things while hiding in the shadows who does not care about hurting other people. Rachel Weiss as Melina Vostok off Black Widow, a seasoned spy trained in the Red Room as a Black Widow and a mother figure to Romanoff and Belova who is now one of the Red Room's lead scientists. Compared to Vostokov's comic book counterpart, who becomes the supervillain Iron Maiden, Weiss explained that the film's version is more ambiguous and layered, with a deadpan personality and no sense of humor, which Weiss found amusing. For the film, Wise was given a tailored Black Widow suit, which she called an iconic piece of clothing that was a lot to live up to. Wise reworked Vostokov's portrayal to be more affectionate towards Shostakov rather than dismissive. Additionally, Liani Samuel, Michelle Lee, and Nana Blondel appear as Red Room assassins Lorado, Oksana, and Ingrid, respectively, while Olivier Richter's portrays Ursa Major, a fellow inmate of Shostakov's. The film's post credit scene sees Julia Louis-Dreyfus reprising her role as Valentina Allegra de Fontaine from the Disney Plus series The Falcon and the Winter Soldier 2021, in an uncredited cameo appearance. Jeremy Renner reprises his MCU role as Clint Barton in an uncredited voice-only cameo. Production. Development. In February 2004, Lionsgate acquired the film rights for Black Widow, and in April announced David Hayter as writer and director of the film, with Marvel Studios' Avi Arad producing. By June 2006, Lionsgate had dropped the project and the rights reverted to Marvel Studios. 
Hayter and Marvel tried getting another financier to develop the project, but Hayter never felt comfortable that we had found a place that was willing to take the movie and the character seriously. This left Hayter heartbroken, but he hoped the film would be made someday. Marvel entered early talks with Emily Blunt to play Black Widow in Iron Man 2, 2010, in January 2009, but she was unable to take the role due to a previous commitment to star in Gulliver's Travels 2010. In March 2009, Scarlett Johansson signed on to play Natasha Romanoff Black Widow, with her deal including options for multiple films. In September 2010, while promoting the home media release of Iron Man 2, Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige stated that discussions with Johansson had already taken place regarding a Black Widow standalone film, but that Marvel's focus was on The Avengers 2012. Johansson reprised her role in that film, as well as in Captain America, The Winter Soldier 2014, Avengers Age of Ultron 2015, Captain America, Civil War 2016, Avengers Infinity War 2018, and Avengers Endgame 2019. After the release of Age of Ultron, Johansson revealed that the number of films on her contract had been adjusted since she first signed to match the demand of the character. As Marvel had not anticipated the audience's great reaction to the character and her performance. In February 2014, Feige said that after exploring Black Widow's past in Age of Ultron, he would like to see it explored further in the solo film, which already had development work done for it including a pretty in-depth treatment by Nicole Perlman, who co-wrote Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy 2014. The following April, Johansson expressed interest in starring in a Black Widow film, and said that it would be driven by demand from the audience. That July, Hayter expressed interest in reviving the project for Marvel, and the following month director Neil Marshall said that he would love to do a Black Widow film saying he felt the character was really interesting given she doesn't have any superpowers, she just has extraordinary skills and the world that she comes from, being this ex-KGB assassin, I find that really fascinating. In April 2015, Johansson spoke more on the possibility of a solo Black Widow film, seeing the potential to explore the character's different layers as depicted in her previous appearances. However, she felt that the character was being used well in this part of the universe at that time. While promoting Civil War the next April, Fish noted that due to the announced schedule of films, any potential Black Widow film would be four or five years away. He added that Marvel was creatively and emotionally committed to making a Black Widow film eventually. Director Kate Shortland at the 2019 San Diego Comic Con Joss Whedon, the director of The Avengers and Avengers Age of Ultron, said in July 2016 that he was open to directing a Black Widow film feeling he could make a spy thriller like really do a good, paranoid, John le Carre on crack sort of thing. In October, Johansson discussed the potential film being a prequel, saying, you can bring it back to Russia. You could explore the Widow program. There's all kinds of stuff that you could do with it. She did caution she may not want to wear a skin-tight catsuit for much longer. The next February, Johansson said that she would dedicate herself to making any potential Black Widow film amazing. It would have to be the best version that movie could possibly be. Otherwise, I would never do it. It would have to be its own standalone and its own style and its own story. Due to the development work already done and the public support for a Black Widow film, Marvel ultimately decided that the best time to move forward with the project would be at the beginning of the latest phase of the MCU in 2020. Feige met with Johansson to discuss the direction of his solo film in October 2017, before Marvel began meeting with writers for the project, including Jack Sheffer. As the hashtag MeToo movement began around this time, Johansson wanted the film to comment on this incredible movement of women supporting other women and coming through these shared experiences of trauma on the other side by really coming forward and supporting one another. Sheffer met with Feige again in December, and was hired to write the screenplay by the end of 2017. Sheffer and Johansson were set to discuss the direction of the film at the beginning of February 2018. Marvel began meeting with female directors to potentially take on the project part of a priority push by major film studios to hire female directors for franchises. By the end of April, the studio had met with over 65 directors for the project in an extremely thorough search, including Denise Doms A.R. Govan, Chloe Zhao who went on to direct Marvel's Eternals 2021, Ama Asante, and Lynn Shelton. Lucretia Martel was also approached, but was discouraged when told she would not have to worry about the action scenes. 
She also felt the music and visual effects of Marvel films were horrible. In the following months, a shortlist of 49 directors was made before the top choices of Kate Shortland, Asante, and Maggie Betts met with Fijian Johansson in June. Milani Laurent and Kimberly Pierce were also in the next to final mix. Johansson was a fan of Shortland's previous female starring film Lore 2012 and was the one who approached her about directing the film. Shortland was hired in July. Johansson said Black Widow became more of a reality during the filming of Infinity War and she was also aware of the character's death in Endgame. Knowing this helped inform when Black Widow would take place in the MCU timeline. Johansson also believed there was no pressing urgency to make the film, and that making it when it was rather than years earlier, allowed the film to be about real stuff. The Hollywood Reporter reported in October 2018 that Johansson would earn $15 million for the film, an increase from the low seven-figure salary that she earned for starring in The Avengers. Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth each earned $15 million for the third films in their MCU franchises Civil War and Thor, Ragnarok 2017, respectively. The pair also earned that amount for co-starring in Infinity War and Endgame. Despite The Hollywood Reporter claiming the salaries were confirmed by multiple knowledgeable sources for their report, Marvel Studios disputed the accuracy of the numbers, saying that they never publicly disclosed salaries or deal terms. Johansson also served as an executive producer on the film. Pre-production in February 2019, Ned Benson was hired to rewrite the script, and Feige confirmed that, despite rumors, the studio did not want the film to receive an R rating from the Motion Picture Association. The following month, Florence Pugh entered negotiations to join the cast as a spy who is morally opposite to Romanoff. Marvel had been considering Pugh for the role since late 2018, but began looking at other actresses, including Saoirse Ronan, in early 2019. The studio returned to Pew after she received strong reviews for her performance in the film Fighting With My Family, 2019. In April 2019 Pew was confirmed to have been cast alongside David Harbour, Rachel Weisz, and O.T. Fag Bennell. Shortland said the film would not be an origin story despite being a prequel to Infinity War and Endgame, as Feige felt that would be expected of a prequel and decided to move in the opposite direction of that idea. Feige likened the film to the television series Better Call Saul, which is a prequel to the series Breaking Bad. Because it was a wonderful example of a prequel that almost completely stands on its own, but it informs you about so many things you didn't know about before. Shortland acknowledged Romanoff's death in Endgame and the fact that some fans were upset she did not receive a funeral in that film, but said the character was private and did not know many people so she would not have wanted a funeral. However, Black Widow allowed the ending to be the grief the individuals felt, rather than a big public outpouring. Black Widow is mostly set between the main plot and end scene of Captain America, Civil War. Johansson did not want to do a true origin story for the character. And both she and Feige felt setting the film after Civil War was the best place to start because it gave us a lot of grit and every possibility to explore Romanoff being on her own for the first time and not tied to a larger organization. The story sees Romanoff confronting Drakov, the head of the Red Room, with Johansson explaining that she is running away from that trauma and exploitation of her past only for her sister, Yelena Belova, to force her to come to terms with that and face it. Johansson added that she was grateful to have the film to comment on this which felt very much like what is happening now. Feige explained that the film included an opening credits sequence with flashbacks to the Red Room and pictures of Drakov as Shortland wanted to tell the story and the horrors that Drakov was responsible for at the beginning of the movie. Shortland explained that a scene involving Thaddeus Ross pursuing Romanov towards the end of the film was deliberately left unresolved to leave the question of how she would get away. Rather than allow the audience to get exhausted by another fight, leaving the audience on a high with the question of how Romanoff used her ingenuity in that situation. Filming Principal photography began on May 28, 2019, in Norway. Shortland wanted the film to have peril at its heart and be really emotional but also story-driven. She took inspiration from films like How to Train Your Dragon 2010, No Country for Old Men 2007, and Thelma and Louise 1991, as well as Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Shortland also looked at combat films and ones with armies and militia, allowing her to image females in those roles to help translate that to Black Widow. Early reports suggested that Rob Hardy would be the film's cinematographer, but he left the production before filming began. 
Gabriel Berestain served as cinematographer instead, having previously done so for the Marvel one-shot short films Item 47, 2012, and Agent Carter 2013, as well as the television series Agent Carter. The production moved to Pinewood Studios in London in early June, with Ray Winstone joining the cast later that month. Shooting took place in mid-July at Hankley Common in Surrey, England, under the working title Blue Bayou. The site was made to look like a Russian farmstead, with added helicopter crash sites. The Thursley Parish Council objected to this filming, as it had occurred while Marvel Studios' application to use the site was still pending. The production planned to revisit the site in late August 2019 for further filming. The film was officially announced at the 2019 San Diego Comic-Con later in July, with a release date of May 1, 2020, revealed alongside roles for some of the new cast members. In August, bodybuilder Olivier Richters announced that he had been cast in the film. In the same month, the special effects crew undertook scanning and textured photography at the Wellsafe Guardian oil rig in the North Sea as a reference for CGI work. In September, Deadline to Hollywood reported that Robert Downey Jr. would appear in the film in his MCU role as Tony Stark, Iron Man. An early version of the script before Pearson joined had included the end scene from Civil War between Stark and Romanoff. This was not in the final film, with Shortland stating that she and Fiji decided against adding Stark or any other heroes to the film in order for Romanoff to stand on her own. And Pearson adding that it was determined that the scene did not add anything new to the story. A total of 13 BMW X3s were used to create the car chase sequence involving Romanoff and Belova in Budapest, with the crew often switching off the electronic stability control and safety assistance functions to fit with the script as well as swapping the X3's electronic parking brake for a hydraulically actuated one. Second unit director Darren Prescott explained that the crew would often replace the engine or tear the entire body off the car and rebuild it from scratch. Prescott wanted to create spontaneous, original, stunt scenes in the sequence, having to continually fine-tune the nuances of the plot and the locations to achieve this. A wrap party for the film was held at the end of September, before production moved to Macon, Georgia for the week of September 30th. Filming locations in Macon, including Terminal Station, were dressed to portray Albany, New York. Set photos in October revealed that William Hurt would appear in the film, reprising his MCU role as Thaddeus Ross. Filming also took place in Atlanta, Budapest, Rome, Georgia, and Morocco. The production filmed for 87 days and officially wrapped on October 6, 2019. Post-production In January 2020, a special look trailer credited Eric Pearson as the screenwriter for the film, with Sheffer and Benson receiving story credit. Additionally, Jeff Snyder of Collider pointed out that the trailer's credit block did not include a cinematographer for the film. He wondered if contractual obstacles were to blame for Marvel not crediting Barristan at that point, and felt that he would be credited in marketing materials leading up to the film's release. Barristan was confirmed in the role in the film's press advance. Matthew Schmidt and Lee Folsom Boyd serve as editors. In mid-March, Disney removed the film from its release schedule due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In early April, Disney announced that Black Widow would now be released on November 6, 2020, and the rest of their Phase 4 slate of films were shifted to accommodate this change. In September 2020, Disney pushed the release back again to May 7, 2021, followed by a third shift in March 2021 to July 9, 2021. In April 2021, following Julia Louis-Dreyfus's appearance as Valentina Allegra de Fontaine in the Marvel Studios television series The Falcon and the Winter Soldier 2021, Joanna Robinson of Vanity Fair reported that Louis-Dreyfus had been expected to first appear in Black Widow before its delays pushed the film's release to after the series premiere on Disney+. Feige confirmed that the post credit scene, in which the character appears in, was supposed to be referenced first in the film before The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The following month, Shortland said the film had been completed a year prior, with no alterations taking place despite the subsequent release delays. The release of the film revealed that Olga Kurilenko portrays Antonia Drake of Taskmaster. In the film, Kurilenko's involvement had deliberately been excluded from the film's marketing. Music Main article, Black Widow, soundtrack Alexander de Pla was revealed to be composing the music for the film in January 2020. Late in post-production, Lauren Balfe replaced Apla as composer, which Apla confirmed in May 2020.
A cover of Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit by Think Up Anger, featuring Malia J, is used in the opening credits sequence. American Pie by Don McLean and Cheap Thrills by Sia are also featured in the film. The Elf score was released digitally by Marvel Music and Hollywood Records on July 9, 2021. Balf employed London's Metro Voices for a 118-piece orchestra and a 60-voice choir singing Russian lyrics with a 40-voice male choir and 20-voice female choir, doing takes with and without lyrics. These lyrics were adapted from Russian poetry by Alexander Pushkin, Leo Tolstoy and Mikhail Lermontov. Balf said that the music of the Red Army was also a massive influence, and that he wanted to give Yelena that Red Army robustness with her theme. Balf avoided more cliché Russian instruments like balalikas as they didn't fit the film and could become a parody. Marketing The film was officially announced at the 2019 San Diego Comic Con, with Feige, Shortland, and cast members promoting it and introducing footage from the first 30 days of production. Some of that footage was included in a teaser trailer for the film released in December, with several commentators highlighting its spy thriller tone and calling the film long-awaited or highly anticipated by fans. Rachel Leishman of The Mary Sue said finally seeing a trailer for the film was surprisingly emotional and felt that setting it between Civil War and Infinity War would allow the character to grow into her more mature form from the latter film after earlier MCU films had depicted her in the supporting role to the male Avengers. Scott Mendelson of Forbes compared the trailer's story and tone to the film's Atomic Blonde 2017, Red Sparrow 2018, and Anna 2019, but felt Black Widow had a commercial advantage over those films since it stars a familiar character. Mendelssohn thought this familiarity could outweigh the teaser's focus on family melodrama over superheroics, which he compared to Marvel's Thor 2011. The Hollywood Reporter's Richard Newby found noticeable differences between Shortland's shot composition and cinematography in the trailer compared to the styles of John Favreau, Joss Whedon, and the Russo brothers, all directors who helped define Black Widow in previous MCU films. What was intended to be the final trailer for the film debuted in March 2020. Nicole Carpenter of Polygon said it was the most in-depth look at the film yet, with Josh Wise of Sci-Fi Wire enjoying its quieter moments in addition to the expected action sequences. Mendelssohn found the trailer to be an improvement over the teaser, attributing this to its theme of found families, the Avengers forced families, the other characters in the trailer, an actual family, portrayed by Pew, Harbour, and Weiss. Disney's president of marketing Asada has said that after Black Widow was delayed from its original May 2020 release date, the marketing team paused their campaign for the film. Once they began working towards a new release date in 2021, they were able to use character looks and story points that they had not revealed in the initial campaign to build a new approach to the film. I has explained that they did not want it to feel like they had returned to the same marketing campaign, which focused on the Black Widow symbol in her black costume. The marketing team differentiated the new campaign by featuring the character's white costume from the film instead, and by focusing on her legacy as an Avenger. In September 2020, Barbie released two Black Widow dolls featuring the black and white outfits worn by Romanoff in the film. Marvel released another trailer for the film in April 2021, which Austin Goslin at Polygon felt was a new, final trailer ahead of the film's July 2021 release date. He said it only had a few new scenes in it but provided the best look yet Taskmaster. Goslin highlighted the fantastic new Russian-inspired version of the Avengers theme music used at the end of the trailer. Germain Lucier of io9 also highlighted the use of the Avengers theme. Feeling that the music combined with footage from previous MCU films as well as flashback moments of Natasha and her family made the trailer feel much more epic than the previous final trailer from March 2020. Lucier said it was a trailer that gets you excited for the return of MCU films. Ethan Anderton of film said the epic free-falling fight with Taskmaster showcased in the trailer looks like a sequence unlike any other in the MCU. The trailer received over 70 million views in its first 24 hours. On July 5, 2021, Moneymaker, Behind the Black Widow, a half-hour documentary special centered on Johansson's stunt double Heidi Moneymaker, premiered on ESPN Plus as part of ESPN's E60 series. The special was directed by Martin Kotobakshi and narrated by Johansson. A subsequent eight-minute version of the special aired on ESPN's Outside the Lines on July 10.
An episode of the series Marvel Studios Legends was released on July 7, 2021, exploring Black Widow using footage from her previous MCU appearances. Black Widow's promotional campaign featured 30 brands, including co-branded opportunities with Geico, Ziploc, BMW, and Synchrony Bank. Additional custom partnerships occurred with Fandango, YouTube, Roku, TikTok, Amazon, a Twitter E3 gaming sponsorship, and announcements, posters, and collectibles for the various premium theater experiences such as IMAX. Release. Theatrical and Disney Plus Premiere Access. Further information, impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the Walt Disney Company. Black Widow premiered on June 29, 2021, at various red carpet fan events in London, Los Angeles, Melbourne, and New York City, and was part of the Tormina Film Fest, which screened on July 3, 2021. It was released in the United States on July 9, 2021, simultaneously in theaters and on Disney Plus with premiere access for $30 United States dollars, and premiered in 46 territories over the course of its first weekend. In the United States, it opened in 4,100 theaters with 375 in IMAX, over 800 in premium large format, 1,500 in 3D, and 275 in specialty D-Box, 4DX, and ScreenX theaters. In IMAX screenings, approximately 22 minutes of the film will appear in IMAX's expanded aspect ratio. It is the first film released in Phase 4 of the MCU. Release dates for China, Taiwan, India, parts of Australia, and many markets in the Southeast Asia and Latin America regions were not set by the film's opening weekend. The film was originally scheduled to be released on May 1, 2020. In early March 2020, after the COVID-19 pandemic had caused the closure of theaters in many countries, the release date for the film No Time to Die was shifted from April 2020 to November 2020. Commentators began speculating about the potential for other major films like Black Widow to be postponed as well. Deadline Hollywood reported on rumors in the film distribution industry suggesting that Black Widow would take the November release date of Marvel's Eternals, with the latter being delayed until 2021. But Disney confirmed then that it still intended to release Black Widow in May 2020. After a final trailer was released for the film a week later, Scout Mendelssohn at Forbes highlighted how the trailer's existence and use of the May 2020 release date confirmed that the film was not being delayed. He said this was the logical choice at this juncture, feeling this was the ideal release date for the film and there was no evidence that the pandemic would affect its performance in the U.S. a week after that. Theaters across the U.S. had been closed due to the spreading pandemic, with the gatherings larger than 50 people being discouraged by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention (CDC). Disney removed the film from its May release date. Adam B. Vary and Matt Donnelly at Variety questioned whether the MCU could be impacted more by the delay than other popular franchises due to the interconnected nature of the series. Though a Marvel Studios source told them that changing the film's release date would not affect the MCU timeline. The pair speculated that this was due to the film being a prequel set earlier in the timeline than other Phase 4 films. In April, Disney changed its entire Phase 4 release slate due to the pandemic giving Eternals November 6, 2020, release date to Black Widow and shifting all of its other Phase 4 films back in the release schedule to accommodate this. Anthony D'Alessandro of Deadline The Hollywood reported in September 2020 that Disney was considering rescheduling Black Widow again with Variety also reporting this and attributing it to the low box office returns for Disney's Mulan in China and Warner Brothers. Tenet in North America. Later that month, Disney pushed back the release to May 7, 2021, rescheduling Eternals and Shanghai in The Legend of the Ten Rings 2021, as a result. In January 2021, Feige said he still expected Black Widow to debut in theaters, but Variety reported that Disney was considering releasing the film on its streaming service Disney+. Plus. There was also potential to delay the film's release again if the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic did not improve leading up to the planned May 2021 release. Or to release the film concurrently in theaters and on Disney Plus with premiere access as was done with Disney's Raya and The Last Dragon 2021. Variety felt it would be insurmountably more challenging for Black Widow to become profitable if it did not have a traditional theatrical release. In early February, Disney CEO Bob Chappick reaffirmed that Black Widow was intended to be solely released in theaters, but Disney was cognizant of theaters reopening, particularly in large cities such as New York and Los Angeles, as well as consumer desire to return to theaters.
According to Variety, Feige was opposed to a hybrid release for the film. If the film was delayed again, the film distribution industry believed Disney would move it to July 9, 2021, which at that time was the release date for Shanghai and The Legend of Ten Rings. The next month, Chappick reiterated that Disney planned to release Black Widow in theaters on May 7, while Deadline Hollywood again noted that delaying the film, releasing it simultaneously on Disney+, Plus, or releasing it in theaters for a short time before making it available on Disney+, Plus were all still possibilities. Chappick soon stated that Disney was remaining flexible as they gauged consumer behavior, and they would make a final decision on releasing the film at the last minute. In late March, Disney moved the film's release date to July 9, 2021, and announced that it would release simultaneously on Disney Plus with premiere access. Shanghai and the Legend of the Ten Rings was delayed again as a result. Kareem Daniel, the chairman of Disney Media and Entertainment Distribution, said the simultaneous release gave fans options to see the film while serving the evolving preferences of audiences. Chaim Gartenberg at The Verge opined that Disney had to move forward with a simultaneous release for the film because they could not afford to delay Marvel's Phase 4 television series. He explained that those series were some of the few, high-profile, must-watch shows, on Disney+. Plus. And once they began releasing with WandaVision in January 2021 there was only so much time that the films could be delayed before the interconnected nature of Marvel's storytelling began causing issues. For instance, the series Hawkeye was expected to release later in 2021 and contained spoilers for Black Widow, so the film needed to be released before then. Gardenberg described Disney and Marvel as being victims of their own success, but felt the potential revenue loss from the simultaneous release could lead to long-term positives such as fans who otherwise would not have watched Marvel's series potentially discovering them when signing up to Disney Plus to watch Black Widow. Home Media Black Widow is scheduled to be released in the U.S. on digital download by Walt Disney Studios Home Entertainment on August 10, 2021, and on Ultra HD Blu-ray, Blu-ray, and DVD on September 14. The film will be made available for streaming to all Disney Plus subscribers starting October 6. Reception Box Office As of July 25, 2021, Black Widow has grossed $154.8 million in the United States and Canada, and $160.1 million in other territories, for a worldwide total of $314.9 million. The film's opening weekend earned $219.2 million globally, which included $80.4 million domestic box office, $78.8 million international box office, and $60 million in Disney Plus Premier Access Global Revenue. The opening weekend gross was within or exceeded various pre-release projections. In June 2021, Fandango reported that the film had the most ticket presales in 2021, and surpassed other MCU films like Doctor Strange 2016, and Spider-Man, Homecoming, 2017. Black Widow earned $39.5 million on its opening night, including $13.2 million from Thursday night previews which was the best preview night since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Its total weekend gross was $80.4 million, making it the top film of the weekend. This was the largest box office opening since the COVID-19 pandemic began, surpassing F9's opening, $70 million, and the largest opening weekend since Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, 2019. The domestic gross was within some of the pre-release projections for the film, though was considered under what some industry projections made during the weekend had felt the film could have earned after examining its opening night and preview grosses. Deadline Hollywood attributed some of this to the film's availability on Disney Plus with premiere access. When the $80 million theatrical gross was combined with premiere access revenue, Disney noted Black Widow was the only film to surpass $100 million in domestic consumer spend on opening weekend since the start of the pandemic, and marked the third largest opening ever for an MCU origin film, behind Black Panther $202 million and Captain Marvel $153.4 million. Following its opening weekend, Black Widow posted the largest non-holiday Monday, $7.16 million, and Tuesday, $7.6 million gross in the pandemic. The film passed $100 million in domestic box office six days after release, making it the fastest to do so in the pandemic. In its second weekend, the film grossed $25.8 million, finishing second behind Space Jam, A New Legacy. 
Its 67% drop marked the largest sophomore week decline for an MCU film, passing Ant-Man and the Wasp 62%. Box office analysts attributed Black Widow's second week decline to its Disney Plus premiere access release, as well as the availability of pirated versions of the film online. In its third weekend, the film earned a further $11.6 million and became the fastest film to reach $150 million in domestic box office gross in the pandemic. Box Office Pro projected in June 2021 that Black Widow would earn $155 minus $225 million for its total domestic box office. The following month, Box Office Pro revised their forecast to a $205 minus $310 million domestic total, due to strong ticket pre-sales and positive critical reception. Outside of North America, Black Widow earned $78.8 million in its opening weekend, from 46 markets. It was the number one film in nearly all of these markets, including the markets in the Asia-Pacific region where it opened, except for Japan, where it was third, and all markets in the Latin America region. Black Widow was the top pandemic opening weekend in 15 European markets. IMAX accounted for $4.8 million of the weekend gross from 59 countries, 11 of which set opening weekend records for the pandemic. In Korea, the film's opening day was the second best of 2021, with $3.3 million, and Hong Kong had the best opening of the pandemic, with $3.2 million. The film had the largest opening day of the pandemic in Austria, the Czech Republic, Qatar, and Slovakia, while in Saudi Arabia, the film earned the highest opening day for a Disney release ever. It was the number one film on opening day in many other markets. As of July 11, 2021, the top markets were Korea $12.7 million, the United Kingdom $9.7 million, and France $6.9 million. Disney Plus Revenue and Viewership with Disney Plus Premier Access, Black Widow earned $60 million worldwide in its opening weekend. This was the first film that Disney announced Premier Access revenue for, with the revenue skewing towards the United States. Viewer tracking application Samba TV, which measures at least 5 minutes of viewership on smart televisions in over 3 million U.S. households, reported that 1.1 million households watched the film in its opening weekend. Deadline Hollywood noted that that viewership translated to about $33 million in revenue for Disney, considering the $29 United States dollars and 99 cents price of Premier Access, which lines up with a $60 million worldwide revenue. The following weekend, Deadline reported that Black Widow was the most pirated film of the past week. The site also noted that Disney was receiving about 85% of the Disney Plus premiere revenue, sharing the rest with platform providers such as Amazon Fire Stick and Apple TV+. Samba TV later updated the film's Disney Plus premiere access viewership, reporting the film had been streamed over 2 million times in the U.S. over its first 10 days of release, resulting in around $59.98 million in overall domestic revenue from Disney+. Plus. Samba TV also reported updates to 10-day viewership in the United Kingdom, 258,000, Germany, 116,000, and Australia, 47,000. Critical response. On review aggregator our website, Rotten Tomatoes, the film holds an approval rating of 81% based on 391 reviews, with an average rating of 6.9, 10. The site's critical consensus reads, Black Widow's deeper themes are drowned out in all the action but it remains a solidly entertaining standalone adventure that's rounded out by a stellar supporting cast. On Metacritic, the film has a weighted average score of 67 out of 100, based on 55 critics, indicating generally favorable reviews. Audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of A on an A-plus to F-scale, while PostTrack reported 88% of audience members gave it a positive score, with 69% saying they would definitely recommend it. Owen Gleiberman of Variety initially feared Black Widow would be two hours of Johansson being a kick-ass fighter in sleek leather with a few signature jackknife moves, but instead found the film to be much more interesting and absorbing, and features just enough kinetic combat to give a mainstream audience that getting your money's worth feeling, but from the opening credits, most of it has a gritty, deliberate, zap-free tone that is strikingly, and intentionally, earthbound for a superhero fantasy. Brian Tallarico of RogerEbert.com praised Pew's performance as finding just the right shades of strength and vulnerability, and as the film's MVP. Writing for The Hollywood Reporter, David Rooney called Black Widow the octane espionage thriller that shifts away from the superhero template. 
Rooney added the film was a stellar vehicle for Johansson and praised the supporting cast. Joshua Rivera of Polygon wrote, Black Widow has a focus that's refreshing to the MCU, allowing it a sense of style and fun that's genuinely enjoyable once you get over the strangeness of the film's continuity in the MCU. Although he said the film feels hollow after the death of Romanoff in Avengers Endgame, writing the film feels like an apology. IndieWire's Eric Cohn gave the film a B grade, writing, like the welcoming breeziness of Spider-Man, Homecoming, the saga of Natasha and Yelena doesn't try to rope in the fate of the known universe to make its operation worthwhile. The relatively low stakes help to foreground their moody dynamic, at least whenever the hand-to-hand -hand combat doesn't get there first. Fortunately, the movie delivers on that front, most notably during a brawl between Black Widow and the robotic killer known as Taskmaster who mirrors her every move. If this is the last time we get to see Johansson meet out justice to her assailants with gymnastic velocity, it snapped send-off. Pete Hammond of Deadline to Hollywood wrote that Johansson goes out with all guns blazing as this first film in Phase 4 of the MCU does not stint one bit on the action. With a film that more importantly focuses on the human being behind the shield of a superhero. Hammond felt that the opening sequence revealing Romanoff's family construct are actually Russian. Spies was reminiscent of the Americans whilst he praised the chemistry between Johansson and Pew. With Natasha's awkward shyness counterpunched by the lively and cynical Yelena. Of the performances, Hammond said, Johansson is again a great presence in the role. Showing expert action and acting chops throughout, while Pew is clearly ready to lead her own franchise after this MCU debut. Weiss is simply such a good actor, she can even make some of the more ridiculous dialogue land and harbor tatted to the hilt is clearly having a blast overplaying every moment of a character designed to think only about himself. Hammond also said, having Winstone in this picture lifts it several notches. And he is deliciously fun and scarily authentic as the villain of the piece. Writing for BBC Culture, Karen James gave the film 4 out of 5 stars, opining that the film was the least Avenger-like movie in the MCU so far. And that, after all this time a tweak in the formula is a good thing. James, like Hammond, noted the film's opening sequence as reminiscent of the Americans whilst she praised Pew's performance. Calling Belova, the most vibrant person in the film, more lived in than most action movie characters. James, however, also noted the film's presentation of the perfect metaphor for Russia v. the West with the Russians have Ing, developed a synthetic formula that can suppress free will, with nothing deep or heavy about the film's treatment of that idea. James also felt that Romanoff was the least interesting character amongst her family, being an odd fit for the sly family movie unfolding around her, and felt the film had a typically Avengers ending with an overall too long action scene that plays like a festival of stunt doubles tossing each other around a Russian lab. Accolades Award Date of Ceremony Category Recipients Result Refs Golden Trailer Awards July 22 2021 Best Fantasy Adventure, Control, Motion, 1 Best Summer 2021 Blockbuster Trailer, Home, Wild Card, Nominated Best Summer Blockbuster TV Spot for a Feature Film, Choose Wild Card, 1 Best Teaser Poster Teaser 1 Sheet, LA, Lindemann Associates, Nominated Documentary Special Main Article, Marvel Studios, Assembled In February 2021, the documentary series Marvel Studios, Assembled was announced. The specials go behind the scenes of the making of the MCU films and television series with cast members and additional creatives. A special for Black Widow, featuring Johansson, is intended to be released on Disney Plus shortly after the film's theatrical release. Future Pew will reprise her role in the Disney Plus series Hawkeye, with her involvement set up from the film's post-credits scene. In June 2021, Shortland expressed interest in directing another film in the MCU, and opined that a potential sequel to Black Widow would likely revolve around a different character in the lead role since Romanoff is dead in the present-day MCU. Weiss had said that she would be very interested if a future storyline featuring Vostokov assuming her Iron Maiden comic book persona were written.